Hello everyone, welcome to another edition of Sunday Sessions. We're just going to wait about half a minute, get our phones set up and then once everyone's in we'll uh, get off and kick start today. So I'm just getting my phone set up. Okay, we just do we live, we're live, good to see everyone. Good to see people already, good to see Groovy Distiller, good to see you Mark. Hope you're well. Alrighty, my name's Samuel Licardi, I'm the brand ambassador for McHenry Distillery. And today we're going to be taking you through the Butterfly Gym. This has been one of the most requested episodes we've had, so it's going to be super excited. Just wait a little bit more before I get into what is the Butterfly, talk about the cocktails, how it came about, and what makes the magic of it all. So, yeah, we've got a good amount of people in. Good to see Sandra, good to see Dan, good to see Jared. We're going to answer Jared and Stephanie's questions today, so we've got all those for sort of dispersed throughout the episode. Good to see Sona, good to see Joseph. Alrighty, we've got a nice amount of people in. So, let's kick off. So firstly, what is the Butterfly Gin? And basically, the Butterfly Gin is our classic dry gin, and then what we do is we infuse that in butterfly pea flour. So that's where we get the name Butterfly Gin from. So there aren't any butterflies in there. I get that question at a lot of festivals and when I'm doing events. So there's no butterflies really in there. What it is though, it's a flower. It comes from Southeast Asia, it grows in really hot climates. So through India, Vietnam, Cambodia, Laos, and what they are is they look like butterfly wings. The beauty of these flowers, however, though, is once you add them to a spirit, they make it blue. And then what happens is when you add an acid to it, it changes color. So that's what we're gonna look at today is how the gin works, what it does in cocktails. And actually I'm gonna to get to one of the questions first off, and that's from Stephanie and says, she's asked, does it work like a normal gin in cocktails? Yes and no. It's, I'll show you today how we go through it and how the colour won't be the same in every different cocktail you make. Depending on what you put in there, depending on how it reacts to different things, that's how it works. From a flavour point of view, it does work in cocktails, but because of the colour change, it's going to be a little bit different. So first off, we're going to make a G&T, get it started and show you what it does. So today, I've got my nice little Denver and Lyle glass, need to get some gin glasses, but today we're just going to use this one. What you're going to do is put your ice in there and then we're going to get your gin. So this is going to be a really nice demonstration. Let me just get my jigger, move this little bottle out of the way. So first off, just 30 ml of gin. So this is our first cocktail for the day. We always start off with a G&T. For this one, this is a demonstration. So normally what you want to do is put one shot, but I'm putting some more in today, just so we can see the, the visual effects. And then today what we're going to be using is an aromatic tonic from Fever Tree. And what makes this a nice little aromatic tonic is they're actually using Angostura bark. So that's really cool. And they're using, yeah, that gentle bitterness of that Angostura from South America. And then they put cardamom, pimento, berries. So it's a, it's a really cool little, um, it tastes like lemon lime bitters a little bit. So yeah, it goes really well with the butterfly gin. But then this is really where the, uh, the magic happens. So I'm going to stop talking and let the gin do the talking. And that's really the best part of my job. So what we've got here is our Butterfly Gin G&T. People are probably gonna say, oh, because the tonic's pink, it's gonna create that color change. No, what we'll do at the end is we'll make another one with the classic, with the Indian tonic. But what it is, is basically it's a pH reaction. So back in high school, when you used to do your litmus paper test on your water, or if you've got a fish tank to see what the pH levels are, basically, actually I'm gonna put a little bit of lime in here just to garnish it, and that's done. So basically what it is, you've got a base, you've got your alkaline, they react together. So this is a nice little science lesson. And yeah, basically what they do is it causes the colour change. Nice and simple. Anything that has acid, so especially like your citric acid coming from your lemons, your limes, any of your, your citrus, that's going to cause the colour change. If you put soda water in there, it will become a different shade of blue. But we think tonic's the best. If you really want to get a slow colour change, just put a little bit of lemon in there and that's going to sort of drizzle it around. Another suggestion before I get into this one, in summer you make a tonic sorbet. Freeze your tonic in the freezer. Then what you do is you crush it up, put it in a blender, just smash up the ice blocks, have that in a snow cone kind of way, and you drizzle the, uh, the butterfly gin on top and the colors will change at different temperatures. So that's a really uh, really good suggestion. So I'm gonna have a bit of a sip, gonna check our comments, gonna answer some questions as well, and then yeah, we'll get into our second drink. It's, oh, it's a really interesting gin. You think it's gonna be exactly the same as the the classic, but you get a lot more floral notes. I think the aniseed comes out a lot more in this too. And this was actually, the aromatic and the, the butterfly was the first actual G&T I ever had at McHenry. So Kristen, 
she made this up for me and I was like, wow, this color change is awesome. So this is one of my earliest memories of actually working with McHenry. So it's a great little sentimental drink too. Super classic gin too. Really enjoyable. I'm just gonna put that there. All right, let's get to our, let's get to some questions, see who's watching. So we've got, Stephanie says, can't wait. Yeah, good to see someone says shots, shots, shots. You can do shots of this, but I think you lose what the gin is. So, and also because it's probably gonna be blue, so I reckon in gin tea is a good way to start. Good to see Shay, good to see Plum Plumber, good to see Tim. I've got a question, do you feel it's a gimmick or the flavors of the butterfly pea is nice, additive? It's not an additive, no. And I don't think, I get this question a lot, is it a gimmick? I don't think so, because when you try the gin neat, you actually see how it changes its flavour. It becomes very floral. So you get those really nice flowery characteristics. And it's beautiful to try this next to the classic when you get those comparisons. As I said before, this one turns a lot more aniseed -y. So you're getting those cardamom, star anise notes, and the orris root really blends all those together. So yeah, it's a very different gin, even though the base is the classic. And that's the beauty about classic gin, is it does form pretty much the entire range of McKenna Distillery, except for the Navy and the, uh, the Federation gin. The Gin Cart, good to see you. Good to see the Gin Queen. How are you, Carolyn? Hope you're well. Good to see Emma. Good to see Antipodee. Kristen, hope you're well as well. Good to see lots of people in today. Black Snake Distillery. If you want an Australian made agave spirit, go check them out as well. And good to see both my Jackies as well. So, I'm gonna have one more sip and then we're gonna get into our second drink, a mixed. Actually, we're gonna do a shake and drink and then a mixed drink. So, change up the order for today. Really classic GT. Super refreshing. All right. So, today, I actually made this last week. But throughout the week, I've been experimenting with how do shaken cocktails work with the butterfly gin. And I went through lots of different recipes because I wanted to get a really nice purple color. Some of the really intricate cocktails, like I made a Corpse Survivor and that turned out to be like rose pink. So it wasn't the real vibrant color I was wanting. It was a little bit washed out. Tasted great, but it wasn't the color I wanted. So today I'm basically making a gimlet with butterfly gin and that's gonna give us a really, really cool color. So I think first off, you get your shaker, fill that with your ice. So yeah, nice and simple. And then what you want to do is get 60 mil of butterfly gin. So this is a really nice, simple cocktail, but it's gonna create a really cool effect. What you want to do is you get your glass, not using a martini glass or a coupe glass, so I've bought these new glasses during the week and they just really look cool. So yeah, 60 mil of gin. And just a little bit more. And then what you want to do in a normal gimlet, you're using lime juice or lime cordial. What I found was lemon juice actually sets off the reaction better. And taste-wise, it doesn't really affect it too much. I like lemon, so for me, it's perfect. So what I've got, pre-batched, just squeeze this before, just 30 ml of lemon juice. Put that in there. And then, once again, a little bit of sugar syrup. So it calls for 22.5 ml, but I'm just gonna put 20 in. Makes it a bit simpler. And yeah, just once again, my, my one to run recipe. A little bit of sugar syrup, and then we're gonna have a shake. Touch more ice. Now, I made this during the week and it came out really well, so hopefully today we're gonna to get the exact same color. And then what we're gonna do as well is we're gonna double strain this, so. All right, give it a shake. And what you wanna do is you wanna get the tin nice and frosty. Get my little strainer, put the glass. See, a nice and simple recipe today. This is just a short of show off our color change. It smells great too. Now, the moment of truth, have, have I got this right? Yes, I have. Lovely. Perfect. And that color will sort of develop over time too as the citrus does interact even more. Smells so fresh and I love that. What we're gonna do, nice and simple, get your little orange peel, spray it in, just give it a twist, put that in. My garnishes aren't my strongest point, but yeah, that's our little, actually I made a little name up. This is called a chrysalis. So when you're thinking about butterfly and change, this is where the change comes through. So we're gonna call this chrysalis. The first one I thought, I'm gonna have butterfly themed names. So that's the mariposa. So in Spanish, that's butterfly. So I thought, let's keep it nice and Bit of, fun, bit of fun today. So we're gonna have a little bit of a taste. And then yeah, we'll get on to our third one. I'll answer some of the other questions and then we'll have a bit more of a chat. Ask away any questions you like about the butterfly gin as well. That's lovely. 
Last week when we used the Federation, you had all those native botanicals coming through. This week you get those beautiful London dry characteristics. Oh, nice kick of citrus too. I really do like it with the lemon in there. And I think that's a really nice color too. That's sort of what, that's what I've been trying to get all week. And in the Corpse Survivor, it just didn't sort of hold up. I made some fizzes and sours. They were cool, but it wasn't what I really wanted. And that's the beauty of cocktail making is you're not gonna nail it every time. So always try and try and see what you like and what your palate really does like. That's really yum. So yeah, that's number two for the day. I'm gonna get to some questions first. So Joseph asks, how many varied colors can you get? And as you can see here, we've already got two really different colors. The third drink will have an even more unique color. And it sort of depends how much citrus you put in, how much tonic you put in, what ingredients are in your cocktail. So really, the color scale really will go from blue to deep dark purple, depending on what you use. And that's, that's something that I really like to explore. And when you buy a bottle of this too, you've got so much avenue to see what you can actually try and make with the different colors. So yeah, that's probably my, my answer to that is, it's hard to sort of say what colors you can make because there's so many different colors on that scale. He also asked, why butterfly gin? And I sort of answered that before. So butterfly pea flower in our gin, butterfly gin. So nice little name. Uh, John also asked, what makes a gin blue? And that's the butterfly pea flower. So it takes about two weeks to actually make. So what we do is we get a big, big vat, gin, flowers in, and we'll let that sit. We'll put the lid on. And about two weeks later, what we do is we just strain the flowers off the top. Strain that through a sieve, get all any sediment out of there, and the gin comes off in that beautiful blue flavour. Put that into a bottle. So it's really quite a simple process. We don't add anything to it. It's just the flowers and the gin. Uh, actually, a really good question here. A bit, bit of a left field one. Jared asks, who's the biggest consumer of gin in the world? Throughout the week, I did some research and it comes down to about two different countries. It's either the Philippines or Spain. So the Filipinos average about 1.4 litres of gin per year or something like that. And the Spanish average 1.7. I sort of couldn't find an exact 2019, so I used 2017, 2018, that's the inner sociologist in me. So yeah, it's between the Philippines and the uh, the Spanish. So if you go there, and you, even you look at the gin in Spain, they've got those beautiful big glasses, and that's sort of where, yeah, the revival of gin in Europe sort of come from. So yeah, that's my answer to that one. Gonna check my comments, see who's joined us. Good to see Joe and Andrew. Good to see Secret Garden Gin. Actually, we've got a good question from Stephanie. How long does your sugar syrup last? About a, uh, about a week to two weeks. I want to keep it nice and fresh. I don't want to let it go too off, but because I'm making lots of different cocktails at home, I'm sort of turning it over quite quickly. Good to see Tim. Hope you're well up in Canberra. Good to see Travis. Good to see everyone. All right, good to see Donna. So my last drink, it's going to be a white Negroni, but we're using a blue gin. So this is going to get us a really interesting color change. And basically the white Negroni came from, a bartender was in France and he didn't have access to your traditional mixer, so he didn't have any Aperol or Campari. So what he did was use Suze liqueur. I couldn't get that, but I actually thought, I'm gonna use something else, and that's why I've got this little thing. It's an aperitif, so very similar. So this is Italica, so it comes from Italy. It's using bergamot, it's using rose and lavender from Piedmont up in the north, and then you've got some Italian, uh, some Sicilian oranges coming from the south. So a really unique Italian, oh, I just love Italian liqueurs and aperitifs, and oh, that's beautiful. Also, one of the prettiest bottles I've ever bought. It's just, that's one thing the Italians do brilliantly is they make really good spirits, but they also put in really, really good bottles. So I'm just gonna move these across for a second. And then what we're gonna do today is we're just gonna build up our white Negroni in the glass. I've got some good little cocktail equipment on its way, but today we're just gonna make it in the glass, in the glass keep it nice and simple. Chuck your ice in there. I've got some big ice molds coming, so I'm gonna have some nice little spheres and rocks in next week's one. Nice and simple. We're gonna use our Maiden Eye Classic Vermouth, Italicus, and gin, 30, 30, 30, so equal parts, or yeah, not really, really simple. So once again, we're gonna, actually we're gonna finish with the gin so we can get that color change. So we're actually gonna start with the Italicus. I love the smell of this. It's just, it's not as bitter as some of the other aperitifs and liqueurs. It's super flowery, we get those nice lavender notes. Brings me back to Italy and to all our Italian friends at the moment, to McHenry Distillery Italia, we hope you're well and safe. And I can't wait to get back over there and enjoy many spritzes and butterfly gins. So yeah, 30 mil, beautiful on its own. Really made to to make spritzes, so that's what its, it's true origin is. Ah, made in Ivermouth, unreal. So what you're gonna do is 30 mil again, put that in, and as you can see, we're gonna get a bit of a different color change already because the Maiden Eye is a bit of a dark color. Just put my lid on for that. Good to see Sarah, good to see Whiskey and John, Whiskey and Sound in, and then, to finish it off, we're gonna get our butterfly gin. 
So nice and simple, this one. So yeah, my take on a white Negroni that isn't entirely white, but oh well. And as you can see here, it's not changing as much as the rest of them. We're gonna give it a little bit of a stir. Mmm, yum. And yeah, so what, I'm gonna show this to you. As you can see, you get the layering, and that's the different alcohols coming through. But it's quite, you look at the different colors, it's not what you would expect. And that's sort of why I want to make this to sort of show how it doesn't react like a normal Jim Wooden cocktails with its color changing sense, and what different colors you can get. So this one's almost a really purple mauvey color on the top, but then down the bottom, you still got the clear liquid. So yeah, really cool. And basically for this one, to sort of bring out those Sicilian oranges, and the Amalfi lemons. I'm gonna put a little bit of a, just some dried lemon in there. Some dried orange, sorry. And that's my take on a white Negroni with blue gin. So yeah, cheers guys. That's just super creamy. This is beautiful. I think this is gonna become my new little, my new little favorite. So you might be seeing it more over the weeks. Also has one of the best corks I've ever seen. Okay, so, I'm gonna have one more of a sip. Ask away any questions and then I think, yeah, we'll have a bit of a discussion. It's a really unique gin. It's, it's it, yeah, I, I love the colour change. People, it's, it's super attractive. Like, I've seen it used in bars in Melbourne where they, they Jager bomb style it. So what you've got is you've got your shot of tonic in the glass already and then they've got little shot glasses of butterfly gin and they just pour it along. So it's a very versatile gin in that sense. I think, for me, it's a real summary gin. You drink it in a G&T, you drink it in your, your, your gimlet. And this one I'm going to call a papillon. So butterfly in French. So I've gone all gone all out today on my names. But yeah. So I think I just wanted to show today three ways you can sort of show this off. Personally, I think it works best in a and t Keep it nice and simple for this. I do love to experiment with our other gins, but this one I think with its unique characteristics, I think that's where it shines best in a and t I really love what Fever Tree are doing. And I think that sort of that sort of wraps up my cocktail. So yeah, definitely ask some questions. We'll have a bit of a chat. I'll sip on some drinks. And that'll really do us. So actually, probably should say, yeah, we don't get our, our butterfly gin from Australia. It won't grow down in Port Arthur. It's far too cold. When you think about the climates in Vietnam, Cambodia, and India, they're hot, humid, and they're great for growing those kinds of things. Where if we tried to grow them in Port Arthur, sadly, it wouldn't be, wouldn't be a great product and we wouldn't be happy with that. So that's why we do import them. This is super nice. I really love what the Maiden Eye is doing, but this shines so well with the butterfly gin. Might have to, might convert me from from your stock standard Negroni. Even though last week I said I don't like the actual Negronis using Campari, I prefer Aperol. But I think what's, what's great with cocktails is try what you like, use different things, and sort of see what, because as I get older, my, my palate changes as I drink lots of different things. So yeah, definitely explore, try lots of things. Mm, that's a bit of a winner. All right, I'm just gonna go through everything. Actually, we've got a question from Don here. Is it true you make a good cocktail Cocktail with gin, you have to mix three ingredients. Uh, no, a gin and tea is just two ingredients, really. But it depends on what you want. Today I've just been really using quite simple ingredients. The Negroni was three ingredients. But really, a cocktail could just be a gin and tea. And I think you can just enjoy gin on its own. I think I love exper I love sort of going to, say, gin palace and trying a gin neat to sort of see what's actually going on with the spirit because I think that's really where it does shine through its most. And then you sort of get into it when you mix it into a martini, into a gin and tea. So or into any other cocktail. So I think you have really good cocktails, you have to mix three ingredients, but the prime example, j and is cocktail. That's only got two. So I'm not counting garnishes, but yeah, so that's sort of our, that's my take on it. And I'm not a bartender, so, but I think that's sort of, uh, yeah, I think sometimes you don't need to have more than three. So yeah, that's my answer for that one. Alrighty, I'm gonna have a bit more of my j and here. So yeah, I really like those glasses. So great for drinking whiskey, but they also make a, a really pretty serving glass. That gets better and better. The colder it gets, oh, beautiful. Yeah, I love the colour of this. This has been fun to work on this week. I think really you could play around with it. You could put lime juice, you could put lime cordial, you could play around with sugar syrup, you could put more gin in there, but that's really gonna change the colour and yeah, it's been really fun, this one. Oh, beautiful. Super refreshing. I think, yeah. So to compare it to last week's Gimlet, it's very different. But that's using two very different styles of gin, using a, a modern Australian one and then using a butterfly gin. So I think that's probably going to wrap me up for today. So we'll be back for Whiskey Wednesdays this week. We sort of had a bit of a break this week. 
But that's because we did our, our interview with Matt Bailey from the SMWS, and then we did our collab stream with Applewood Distillery, and that was a great night. So it's been a really good week of live streams. So we thought, let's let's put Whiskey Wednesdays on hold, but we'll bring it back this week. And I think we're going to do, I think we're going to do another week of mixing. So not too sure what we're going to do. I'll reveal that closer to the date. And then next Sunday, I've sort of just taken full control over this, and we're not going to look at one product again. We're going to have like an Easter special, but for all you Star Wars fans out there, next week... Monday is May the 4th, so May the 3rd is a Sunday. So what we're going to be doing is Star Wars cocktails. So all my mates are probably giggling away at the moment. But yeah, so we're going to do that. We're going to have a bit more fun, bring in something new, and who knows what we're going to make. I've been doing some research, and some of the cocktails I think I'm going to have to make are, are wild, wacky, and a little bit weird, and that excites me. So I think we're going to have a bit of fun next weekend. So yeah, join us next weekend for, for Star Wars edition. Definitely the Butterfly Gin is going to be coming out. We're going to be using lots of different flavors. Midori might be even on the cards, so... Who knows? And yeah, Whiskey Wednesdays. And in the next couple of weeks, we'll be getting some really cool guests on Whiskey Wednesdays too. So we're going to have some chats. We're going to drink some whiskey and find out what's going on in the Australian whiskey industry. So any last questions? And I'll wrap it up. I'll go through once again all our drinks. But yeah, thanks for joining us today. It's been a pleasure. I love talking about our gins and especially this one where it's a really unique product. So yeah, I'll go through once more. And once again, thanks everyone for joining in. Mmm, classic gin too. It's always going to be a soft spot for me. And it's just a great party drink as well because you've got that colour change. Like on New Year's Eve, we had a great time and we are just making different cocktails with it. And it was just awesome to celebrate. And it's a good celebratory drink. I think once we're all done, I think definitely we all need to go out and have a, a butterfly gin tea. That one's super fresh. That's going to be lovely to sip on this afternoon. And I think this one actually is my favourite. I really love the deep flavours coming through from this. The vermouth, I've talked about that every week nearly. It's a beautiful vermouth. You could substitute in Lay if you wanted, but my Lay's oxidized a little bit, so the color's gonna be darker. I didn't really want that today. So yeah. But thank you everyone for joining us today. Hope you're all well. And I think that's gonna wrap us up for this Sunday session. So see you on Wednesday, see you on Sunday, and have a lovely, uh, lovely afternoon. Cheers, guys.